Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to look at adding mutations to a hot chocolate GraphQL API. So as you can see we have a basic GraphQL API with a query class and that query class has our book query which simply returns a hard-coded book C sharp in depth. Now what we're going to do in this video is add a mutation into our GraphQL API which will allow us to add a book as well as getting books. So first things first, what we are going to do is create a book service. So if I right click on API, add a new class called book service like so, add it into version control. And what I'm going to do is I am going to move our book and author types into the book service, like so. And I'm going to create a collection of books within the book service. So what I'm going to do is say public i collection of type book, books with a get there. And I am going to initialize that property from the constructor. Instead of passing in a collection of books though, I am going to new up a list of books like so. And I am going to pass in a new book with a title of C sharp in depth and an author John Skeet like so. Essentially then this creates a new a list of books with a single book in it. And then we've also moved our book and author records from the query class into the book service. What we're going to do now is register the book service in our startup. So if I come down into our program.csharp file and I'm going to say builder.services.addSingleton of type book service. That means that our book service will only ever be instantiated once, so there will be a single shared book service throughout the lifetime of the GraphQL API. And what I'm then going to do is within our add GraphQL server, add query type, I am going to add a call to register service of type book service, and that will essentially wire up the book service into the GraphQL server. What I'm going to do now, last but not least, is modify the query to return a list of books instead of a single book. And it's going to be that list from the book service. So what we will do is inject the book service into the book query get book method. And then I'm going to modify the return type to be an enumerable of type book. And then what we will do is we will say return book service dot books, like so. That's essentially moved the logic of the uh, collection of books into the book service out of the query. And then we've updated the return type to return a, an enumerable of books, so multiple books, rather than just one single hard-coded book. So what I will do is I will now build and run the GraphQL API. And if I now come into the browser, navigate to the GraphQL endpoint, and we have our banana cake pop editor. If I then create a document, leave it with the default settings, and we are going to say query and book, and then title and author and name, like so. And if we then run that, you can see that we have our a single book there returned with our title and the author name. You'll notice, however, that the query is still called book, and that is because our method within query is still just called get book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to be plural, so it's get books plural rather than singular. And if we stop and rerun our GraphQL API, come back into the browser, and if we then reload the schema, 
you'll notice that we can't find the query field book because it's now changed to books like so. If we then run that again, you'll see we now have the uh, property called books, which more closely matches the return type, which is a list of books rather than just a single book as it was before. So what we are going to do now is come back into our solution and we are going to create a mutation to add a book. So if I right click on API, add a new class, and I'm going to call this class mutation, add it in like so. And this is going to be our add book method. So we're going to say public book, add book, which will take in a title and an author, like so. We're also going to inject in the book service, much like we did within our get books query method. What I'm going to do is say var book equals new book with our title and then our author, like so. We then say book service dot books dot add our book and then we will return the book from the add book mutation. Now there's a couple of things to touch upon here. You'll notice that we simply specify a property called title and a property called author. Conventionally, if you're setting up a traditional REST endpoint, you would uh, have a single parameter here of type book called book and that would uh, typically bind to the body of the uh, REST for HTTP request. And then the body would essentially contain a, a JSON payload of the book with a property for title and property for author. Now in GraphQL, it's typically recommended within mutations to have a single input property called input and that uh, input property then contains the uh, properties, in this case, title and author. And then the return type is book. Again, in GraphQL uh, conventions, that is typically wrapped in a, a payload type, which will then contain a nested uh, book property. And it will also contain any errors that there may have been if any errors were thrown during the execution of the mutation. So the GraphQL um, convention is slightly different to traditional REST in that you typically have a single input property and then you also have a, a payload that is returned from the mutation. Now hot chocolate comes with uh, the mutation conventions available to be wired up out of the box. So you'll notice we've specified a property for title and author. And what we can do is we can either decorate this method with the attribute use mutation convention. Now that will set up this single mutation to follow the GraphQL mutation conventions. Or what we can do is we can apply those conventions globally. And if we come in here, where we have our add GraphQL server and add query type, we can say add mutation conventions like so, and that will register those mutation conventions globally for all mutations within the GraphQL API. Now, last but not least, much like we have our query type, we're also going to add in our mutation type, and that will be type of a mutation. And that will then hook up our mutation class into the GraphQL server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun our API project, give that a few moments to rebuild the API. And if I come back into banana cake pop, and if I then reload the schema, you can see now that's reloaded successfully. And as well as our book query, we should now have an add book mutation. So what I am going to do is get rid of the query there and we're going to replace that with mutation. And you can see here we have our add book mutation. 
And you'll notice there the type, the return type is this add book payload, which has a property called book. And then this has the same properties as were on the query, which is the title and also the name of the author. Now you'll notice that we are missing the required input for the add book mutation. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, property there called input. And you can see here we have our author and title. So I'll simply specify a title of hello world, just for testing purposes. And I will assign myself as the author. Do that uh, like so. And what we are then going to do is execute that. You can see there that it has run uh, successfully. And so what I'm going to do is underneath that mutation, I'm going to create a query to get all of the books like so. And then you can see now, because these two operations are anonymous, they will uh, clash, cause a conflict. So I'm going to name that mutation add book, and I'm going to name the query get books like so. And that removes the uh, anonymity there, the clash, because they were both anonymous. Give that a format. And you can see now we have the option to run either the add book or get books. I'll change that to the get books query. And if I run that, you can see now we have our C sharp in depth book and we also have our hello world book like so. Now the last thing that I am going to touch upon when it comes to mutations is the variables that you have within GraphQL. So you'll notice at the moment we are passing in that input inline hard coded within the uh, mutation. However, what you can do is you can use variables in GraphQL in order to keep the uh, mutation code static, and then you can have the variables being dynamic. So what we are going to do with our add book mutation is we are going to specify a variable here called input, and this is going to be of type add book input. We set the exclamation mark there to denote that it is a required variable. And what we do now is we will replace our input there with our input variable, like so. And you'll notice that down here in the variables window, we now have a uh, squiggly line there to indicate that we are missing the required input property. So what we do is we will create a property called input. And then we can say hello world two as the title. And then the author, I'll set that to my name again, like so. Let's take a comma after the title there. And essentially what this allows you to do is it allows you to have a static uh, mutation that doesn't change. And then the dynamic uh, variables are essentially provided within the uh, variable input and then you can keep the variables out of the uh, mutation that is executed and then essentially have a separate variables property in the request that is sent to the GraphQL server. So if I flick that back to add book and if I run that, you can see it's executed that successfully. We have our book returned, hello world 2. If I then flick back to the get books query, and if I run that, you can see we have our C sharp in depth, hello world and hello world two. So essentially what I have shown in this video is how to add a mutation type to our GraphQL API. I've also showed how we can set up the mutation conventions in order to follow GraphQL best practices globally across all of our GraphQL API's mutations. We've also added our singleton book service and registered that service with the GraphQL server. We've added a mutation to add a book into the collection of books with a title uh, parameter and an author parameter. 
And I've then shown you how you can either set up the input in line within the mutation itself, or how you can reference the add book input as a variable, and then define the variable as JSON within the variables property that's passed alongside the mutation in the GraphQL request. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.